In this box, I have a suspiciously cheap RTX 3060 that I bought off of AliExpress. And as is the case with everything off of AliExpress lately, it took a weirdly long time to ship. I think it took over a month to come, even though I paid extra for FedEx shipping. Now this RTX 3060 cost the equivalent of 240 US dollars. And apparently it's new, it says so in the title of the listing. The price isn't the only dodgy thing about the listing, I'm looking at you, six gigs of video memory, but it's almost a hundred and forty dollars less than the cheapest RTX 3060 you can buy in the US at the moment. So I'm expecting at least DEFCON 3 level shenanigans. Oh, this FedEx packaging I think is paper. That's a first. Usually it's covered in enough plastic to strangle at least three harbor seals. So that's cool. Although they do lose some of the points for blatantly lying on the bag. It did not come in an extremely urgent manner. Not even almost. Oh. Never mind, there's all the plastic. Although it is good to see that Box Tape Man still has a job. You can see they did an immaculately even job. Very nice. Yeah, this just keeps looking more and more like something they had to smuggle inside the FedEx llama. Maybe that's why it took so long. Give it a look. Okay, that is a graphics card. Oh, oh, would you look at that? It actually seems to have a mobile RTX 3060 die in it. That is very, very interesting. Uh, wait, does it say anything about that on the listing? Let me quickly have a look. It in fact does not specify it's a mobile 3060, and I feel like them stapling a laptop die to a desktop PCB is an important thing to clarify. But that explains the six gigs of video memory, and it's potentially priced appropriately. That's if and how this cobbled together abomination works. Either way, it is a fascinating specimen. Let's have a closer look physically at the card. So we have the plastic shroud with two fans and a reasonable looking heatsink. You know, we've got two fat heat pipes over there. The actual fin array isn't just like a block of aluminium that they cut grooves into. We've also got some supplemental power. In terms of rear IO, we have two HDMI and two display ports, which means it's probably not a GTS 450. Around the back, the crudely hewn plastic backplate does nicely emphasize the mongrel pedigree of this card. Wow, it just felt like I dropped a pretentious wine description. <laughs> I don't know where that came from. Anyway, let's drop this mutt in the system and see if it works. Test system wise, I'm using the PC that I built in this ridiculously overpriced pink Asus anime case from the previous video. Yes, it works very good. We've got a signal out and everything. But my excitement was short-lived because I just couldn't get drivers installed on the thing. Oh, this driver could not find compatible graphics hardware. I tried various combinations of DDU wiping, restarting, and different driver versions, but the drivers refused to associate with the riffraff. Even GPU-Z, which normally is like a scam graphics card sniffer dog, seemed pretty confused by this graphics card. Okay, so this is getting a bit concerning. I can't actually install drivers on it. So let me drop this AliExpress RTX 3060 in a different system and see if that changes anything. No, this is a completely different system and I'm still getting the same error message. Really irritating. It, it means it has to be the graphics card. So uh, I guess I'm just gonna take it apart and have a closer look at it. Oh crap, none of my screwdrivers reach the screws down there. Actually, let me try my wish build RAM screwdrivers. That actually works. <laughs> I am now very glad that I kept those little screwdrivers. I guess before we destroy the sticker, we should probably scan the QR code. How is this helpful at all? I don't understand. <laughs> what? I don't even have to wipe the thermal paste down. I can see that that's a GA106 die. Although, let's not be too hasty. Let's quickly make sure. Wait, what? That is a GN20 
E3A1 die. What the hell is that? Wait, Google just confirmed it, it is a laptop RTX 3060. Why won't drivers install on it? That's really weird. At this point, on a whim, I reached out to the AliExpress seller, telling them that I couldn't install drivers on their graphics card, to which they responded, this driver, with a link to a Google Docs drive that had some very official looking drivers in them. Okay, this all feels a little bit like I'm about to get mauled by a tiger, but that's fine. Now in the text file, it's telling me to install the one driver first, and then have it not do anything and then install the second driver, and then it should work. So, in the spirit of those scientists that licked plutonium to see what would happen, let's give this a try and see what happens. This just makes my spidey sense tingle a little bit. I don't know, man. Again, a very comforting warning. Okay, that did nothing, which means it's time for driver number two. Hey, it's worked! We now have drivers and probably several Trojan on the system. Now, it's not the newest driver, which does make me want to see if we can now install real drivers on it. Uh, let me give that a try. GeForce Experience works, that's a good next step. No, I still can't install official drivers on here. And I don't know about you, but I feel like having to rely on ghetto-rigged AliExpress virus drivers is a bit of a deal breaker, but maybe that's just me. Anyway, let's finally do some gaming on this chlamydia-stricken little graphics card. Okay, so after a bit of a traumatic start, we finally launched GTA 5 on this mobile RTX 3060. And with 1080p high, we are very much in heavy stutter territory in terms of frame rate. So I'm actually going to put the graphics a bit higher. Okay, there we go. That's better. So now we're running at 1080p high and we are no longer quite in that zone where stutters happen. And as I say that, it starts stuttering. Look at that power draw. The graphics card is just using about 80 watts of power and we're still getting many frames per second. That's some crazy efficiency right there. You can see the core frequency is also pretty high, often hitting 1900 megahertz. That is very impressive for such a troubled little graphics card. With that, let's try some more games. Now again with Battlefield 5, we're getting great performance with very low power draw. This is at 1080p high settings and yeah, we are well over 120 frames per second. We don't have particularly high temperatures on the GPU. Again, because it's not drawing that much power. Like, I don't, I don't think I've seen it go over 80 watts once, actually. It just makes it such a shame that the graphics card is so dodgy because it's really good. Now, before I compare it to a full fat desktop RTX 3060, let's just try a couple more games. Someone commented asking for Fortnite recently, so there you go. Cyberpunk with 1080p high settings is also running very well. We're getting over 60 frames per second and it's nice and smooth, good gaming experience. And with that deep insight, I think it's finally time to compare it to a desktop RTX 3060 to see just how efficient it really is and how many frames per second we lose for that reduction in power draw. Okay, with Battlefield 5, it's definitely running a bit better. Before, we were jumping between 150 and 140 frames per second. Whoa. Whereas now, it's like 150 to 170, so a little bit better performance. But look at that power draw. Up from a peak of about 80 watts, that is almost double for not that much more performance. That's some crazy efficiency on that mobile RTX 3060. Yeah, the same goes for Cyberpunk. There is a bit more performance, but at the cost of almost double the power draw. But then there's the other difference of the desktop card having 12 gigs of video memory as opposed to six gigs. And with a game like Cyberpunk, you can see it just creeps over that six gigs of memory utilization at 1080p, and it would use more at higher resolutions so the full RTX 3060 is probably a bit more future-proof and a lot less dodgy. With that, let's directly compare them with some more precise benchmarks.
interesting results. There were some definite anomalies like Shadow of the Tomb Raider and Doom Eternal, but when I wanted to retest the AliExpress card, Windows just refused to install the drivers again. It kept giving me like Trojan warnings and stuff. And with that, what did we learn in today's video? Well, a Plague Rat could exhibit world-class efficiency and be very competitively priced, but it being a Plague Rat is still kind of the main thing. Which brings me to the end of the video. If you want to check out that pink Asus anime case video, a suggestion will pop up in a second. And until the next video, thank you for watching. Bye-bye.